What is going on guys? This is Earpugs, and in this video I'm going to be covering a 3v3 arena tier list for Classic Wrath of the Lich King. This assumes a 3.3.5 endgame balance patch, which is what pretty much every private server uses, and historically Blizzard has gone with the endgame balance patch that private servers use, like 1.1.2 with Classic and 2.4.3 with TBC. I am averaging all of the arena seasons together for this tier list, and will have at least 3 comps per class, so that way I make sure no class gets missed here. I am mainly focusing on the meta comps for this tier list, so you won't really see any low tier or bad tier comps in this list. There is of course a bunch that I wasn't able to cover because there's just too many to cover, so I just chose a bunch that are very good, none of these are bad. Without further ado, let's get started. Looks like first up on our list here we have Beast Cleave. This comp has one of the scariest openers in the entire game with Bloodlust, Spirit Wolves, Bestial Wrath, two Freedoms, Purge, and an MS effect from the Hunter's Aim Shot, which is an instant cast. This comp has the potential to absolutely demolish any target that it connects to in the opener, and if you don't peel their opener and or outpressure them, it's almost guaranteed that you're gonna die. This comp, along with many other cleave comps, will be very good in the beginning of Wrath of the Lich King, seeing as people will have lower health pools and less resilience. While this is a very strong comp, BM Hunters are a little bit nerfed when you compare them to TBC, Seeing as Bestial Wrath is now a 10 second duration instead of an 18 second duration like it was in TBC, on top of that hunters can actually be disarmed which will remove their ranged weapon now. So if you're able to disarm a Bestial Wrath that's only 10 seconds, it obviously is going to make that Bestial Wrath not very scary. However, if they don't kill somebody in the opener, they do start to fall behind a little bit, especially when they're fighting spell cleaves and different control comps, seeing as they're not going to have the pressure they need to land a kill. With that being said though, their opener is absolutely bananas if they can get it off, and it's very likely that somebody dies if they play correctly. This lands itself a spot in the bottom of the S tier. Up next is Boomkin Rogue. Now this is actually a surprisingly strong comp for Wrath of the Lich King, seeing as both DPS start off in stealth and can almost always get the start that they want to, with being able to sap one target and then come out and clone another one, or even typhoon somebody off of a ledge. This comp also has a ton of control, seeing as they have Sap, Blind, Cyclone, Entangling Roots, Cheap Shot, Kidney Shot, Gouge, and Fear. Boomkins and Rogues have a ton of control for any team that they are fighting, plus an absolute truckload of damage thanks to Starfall and Ambush. Not to mention the fact that the Rogue has Wound Poison, which is one stack now, so if they shiv that on one time, it's instantly 50% healing reduction, which is very, very difficult to deal with for a lot of healers. This top can 100 almost any target in a matter of seconds if the Boomkin is free casting and lands a Starfall, and the Rogue also lines up their Shadow Dance with a bunch of Ambush spam. This gives them huge swapping potential, seeing as Starfall and Shadow Dance are both a fairly short cooldown, so just about every minute they're going to have a chance to absolutely destroy somebody. A big drawback to this comp is that both the Rogue and the Boomkin are fairly easy targets to kill, so if they don't generate huge pressure in the opener, they can start to fall behind fairly easily, and it is very hard for this team to reset, seeing as they don't have any serious defensives or reset defensives like a Paladin have, etc. While you could run this with a Paladin, that still wouldn't change the fact that Boomkins are very squishy and so are Rogues. Overall though, this comp has huge one-shot potential and a very strong opener, this top lands itself a spot in the A tier. Moving on to Cupid Cleave, which is Rhett, Hunter, Disc Priest. This is a very, very, very strong comp and gets so many buffs going into Wrath of the Lich King, making this an absolute monster in 3v3 arena. This comp has tons of control, tons of damage, an MS effect from aim shot, loads of survivability, and a double dispel for magic effects from the Paladin and the Priest, which makes it very, very hard to control this, especially as a spell cleave. If I said this comp was very strong, I would be underselling it. This is one of the hardest teams to fight in the entire game when played correctly. Controlling it is very difficult thanks to that double dispel. Not to mention the fact that they have two freedoms, one from the Paladin and one from the Hunter. As far as defensives go, they also have Bubble for the Pally, two deterrences for the Hunter, and Pain Suppression for the Priest, so they have a really good chance to survive a lot of bursts. This comp absolutely excels at putting out immense pressure on any target they are hitting, thanks to the MS effect from aim shot, plus the hunter's damage and the paladin's damage being very high as a baseline damage. 
Not to mention the fact that they have a ton of CC to go along with it for the healer, like Hodge, Repentance, Scatter Shot, Silencing Shot, Freezing Trap, and Fear. Plus the priest being able to purge the target clean of whoever they're trying to kill with Dispel Magic. Overall, this comp is insane to say the least and lands itself a spot in the S plus tier. Looks like FMP is up next. Now this comp is much stronger in Wrath than it was in TBC, thanks to a whole host of buffs that the Pharaoh gets. For example, they now have Berserk, which is absolutely insane damage when they pop this. On top of that, they also get Predatory Strikes, which gives them an instant Cyclone anytime they perform a 5-point finishing move, which is very often in the game. It's also very hard to cast into this comp, seeing as they have two ranged kicks, along with a good amount of CC like Polymorph and a ton of slows, not to mention the fact that Ferals actually have a real stun now, seeing as Maim doesn't break on damage, so that is basically a kidney shot, and of course the Priest having fear as well. A couple big negatives to this comp though, is the fact that the Feral doesn't give them a Mortal Strike effect like a Rogue would with Wound Poison. So that means that they really have to have very scripted goes to land a kill, because if the healer is able to cast into his teammate, it's unlikely that you're going to kill them. Also, ferals and mages are fairly squishy in Wrath of the Lich King, and decently easy to kill. Nevertheless, this is a strong comp when played correctly, and lands itself a spot in the A tier. On the topic of ferals, looks like Jungle Cleave is next. Now, this is a comp that has absolutely insane burst damage, while also having a ton of CC and mobility, since the Feral can shift every slow in the game as well as all roots, on top of them having a passive speed buff. The Hunter also has Disengage and Freedom, allowing both of the DPS to be extremely mobile and very difficult to get away from. Combining that with the fact that the Hunter has an aim shot giving them an MS effect makes whatever they're hitting very, very hard to heal. Not to mention the fact that the Feral is throwing out instant cast Cyclones the entire game, making it very, very difficult to generate any pressure, seeing as anytime your DPS is going to pop a cooldown, they're just going to instantly eat a Cyclone. And that, of course, doesn't even reference the fact that the Hunter has Scatter Shot, Freezing Trap, and Silencing Shot. Combining all of that pressure with the Priest's Fears and Purges, this comp is a very, very scary sight to see on the other side of the arena. The only downside to this comp is that if you are able to shut the Hunter down or the Feral down, they usually can't recover, seeing as this is a very momentum-driven comp. But nevertheless, when played correctly, Jungle Cleave is absolutely insane and definitely lands itself a spot in the S tier. Speaking of Ferals, we have Kitty Cleave up next. Now this is a very straightforward comp. The main concept is to have both the Feral and the Warrior connect onto a target and then destroy it. They have MS from the Warrior along with loads of damage from both classes. However, a glaring problem that this comp has is that if you're able to shut down the Feral, it's basically just the Warrior doing damage and the Feral has to sit in bear form, which will inevitably put them behind. And if this comp isn't generating pressure, they're not doing a whole lot because their whole thing is that they're doing a lot of damage. So if you're shutting that down, that's basically all they can do. This is one of those comps that's very good at lower MMR because it's very easy for both the Warrior and the Feral to just connect to one target and destroy it. Most people aren't really peeling that well at low MMR or out pressuring. However, once you get into the higher MMR with Kitty Cleave, you will start to fight teams that understand that the Feral has to go into bear form if you're destroying him. Don't be mistaken, this comp can literally one-shot almost any target in the game, but if they don't generate a monster amount of pressure in the opener, they will likely start to fall behind. The only real CC they have is Cyclones, plus a Fear with a very long cooldown and some random stuns and kicks. Combining all the pros and cons, Kitty Cleave overall goes into the B tier. Up next, looks like we are talking about one of the Mac Daddy spell cleaves, which is LSD, aka Lock Shaman Druid. This comp usually runs with a Destro Lock, Ellie Shaman, and a Resto Druid, while there are very many variants of this. When played with these specializations, they have the highest single target burst in the entire game, with Lava Burst and Chaos Bolt. This is a comp where if someone is caught out of position for even a few seconds, they can very easily get 100 owed if both the Destro Lock and the Ellie Sham are able to both cast into them. This is a comp where if you waste your trinket, you basically no longer get to play the game, seeing as all three classes are able to land CC chains of 30 seconds or more with the Lock's pet that has Seduction, the Lock's Fear, Death Toil, Shaman's Hex, the Druid's Roots, and the Druid's Cyclones, as well as Bash, LSD is one of the strongest 3v3 comps in the entire game, no questions asked. And when played correctly, it feels almost impossible to beat. This comp definitely lands itself a spot in the S plus tier. Speaking of LSD, we now have LSD2 on the list. 
This is a comp that runs with a Boomkin instead of a Resto Druid, and then also runs with a Resto Shaman instead of a Ellie Shaman. The Warlock can also play Destruction or Affliction, however in most situations it's going to be an Affliction Lock because they partner so well with the Boomkin's Dots, and for this example we're going to say it has an Affliction Lock in it. This comp has the highest AoE burst in the entire game, thanks to the Lock being able to dot up the entire team with Unstable Affliction, as well as the Boomkin's Dots and the ability to pop Starfall, which is the highest AoE damage in the entire game next to a Sweeping Strikes Bladestorm. If they are able to get full Dots rolling on all three people and the Boomkin pops Starfall, they will literally kill all three targets at the same time. The amount of damage that this comp does when it's left to free cast is absolutely unhealable, and you need to control the Boomkin Starfall or else your loss is almost guaranteed. This is an extremely powerful spell cleave, seeing as they have tons of CC like Fear, Hex, Cyclone, and Tangling Roots, Spell Lock, Death Toil, and Bash. Not to mention all the utility that your Shaman gives you like Tremor Totem, Purge, Wind Shear, Bloodlust, and much more. This comp, when played correctly, is very, very strong, and its only real downfall is that if you're able to sit on the Boomkin or if you're able to sit on the Lock and just shut down their damage, they won't be able to generate that much pressure. However, they have all the CC in the world they need to peel you off of whoever you're trying to kill, allowing them to get away in most situations. And combining all this together, LSD2 lands itself a spot in the S tier. Moving on to another spell cleave that is very strong, we have MLS up next. Now this comp can be played with either Fire or Frost, and also Destro or Affliction from the lock, depending on what playstyle you guys are trying to do. You can also replace the Resto Shaman with a Resto Druid, and it's pretty much just as good. MLS is a comp that can literally CC you for eternity, seeing as they have enough CC where they can actually just full chain you and then wait for the DR to be off and just rechain you again. For example, they can fear you into a polymorph, into a seduction, into a nova, into a slow, back into a fear, back into a polymorph, vice versa, etc. So much control this comp has, it's very, very, very strong. And of course, mages and warlocks do tons of damage in Wrath of the Lich King. This is another very, very strong spell cleave, and definitely one that you will see at the top of the ladder. MLS lands itself a spot in the S tier as well. Moving on to an absolutely horrifying comp to deal with, we are talking about PHD, aka Paladin, Hunter, Death Knight. This is played with a Holy Paladin, Marksmanship Hunter, and an Unholy DK. This comp has some of the highest sustain damage in the entire game, and it also has an MS effect from the Hunter's Aim Shot, making it almost impossible to heal the target if both DPS are connected to it. Since they play with a Hunter and a Paladin, they have two freedoms to ensure that the Death Knight is always on their kill target and never in snares. Another huge feature of this team is that the Holy Paladin gives this comp the ability to absolutely all in the other team with little risk of them dying, seeing as the Paladin can literally run in with them and bubble anytime they get into trouble. They also have bop for their DPS as well, so they can bop their DKs out of kidney shots or any kind of a physical stun, etc. Combining all of the Hunter's CCs together with all of the Death Knight's damage, this is a very, very scary comp, and it must be controlled or else they are guaranteed to kill somebody. All in all, this comp is very scary for multiple reasons and lands itself a spot in the S tier. Moving on to another cleave, we have Rhett DK Priest, aka Vanguards. While this comp doesn't have a Mortal Strike effect, it does have a lot of survivability and a ton of damage. The Priest and the Paladin can both dispel magical effects, making this team very hard to get under control, seeing as you have to CC both of them at the same time in order to prevent them from dispelling each other. Not to mention, the Paladin can also be dispelling Rogue's Poisons, completely negating them in most situations. This is a comp where if the Paladin pops wings and the DK uses Gargoyle, they are almost guaranteed to kill somebody as long as they both connect, along with all three classes having decent defensives as well as self-heals. The only major downside to this comp is that if they don't get a kill when they pop their cooldowns, their sustained damage usually isn't enough to land a kill unless they land some kind of crazy CC chain on a healer and they have limited CC to begin with. Nevertheless, it is a good comp and lands itself a spot in the A tier. Moving on to RLS aka Roguelock Shaman. This is a comp that has good control and pressure but is also extremely squishy. They are able to lock down teams pretty well and secure a good opener with sap, Cheap, Kidney Shot, plus Fear and Death Toil, all while the Shaman purges the kill target clean, making them much easier to kill. When played correctly, this comp has huge switch potential since the lock will try to keep full dots on at least two of the three targets at the same time. 
allowing the rogue to call any kind of a swap if they find somebody is out of position. By far, the biggest weakness for this comp is that all three classes here are pretty easy to kill, especially if they're fighting a cleave, which forces them to play near perfectly if they want to kill against TSG or PhD, etc. They do, however, have a pretty decent toolkit to peel any target off of the Warlock or the Rogue, seeing as they have all the stuns, gouge, blind, fear, sap, coil, shadow fury, etc. However, if they mess up their CC chain even once, or if they start to overlap some CCs, it's very easy for them to fall behind and simply lose because of it. This is a decent comp in Wrath of Lich King, but it is very, very hard to play, and this lands it a spot in the B tier. Up next, we have RMD, or Rogue Mage Resto Druid. Now, this comp is not as good as it was in TBC, since Resto Druids can't play as aggressively anymore, since they have no Feral Charge, and Bear Form also being slightly worse than it was in TBC, due to armor scaling. It still has a Rogue and a Mage, of course, which are a very good combination. Also, Blind no longer shares a DR with Cyclone and Wrath of Lich King, allowing them to have a very long CC chain on a healer. If the healer trinkets, they can land Polymorph into Blind into Cyclone, which is 26 seconds of that healer not being able to play, not to mention Counterspell or any kind of extra CCs they can throw at them out of that. Both the Druid and Rogue can also stealth in this opener, allowing them to usually open how they want to. This comp does have a monster amount of control and some pretty high burst damage if the Rogue and Mage connect. However, it does fall apart rather quickly if the opener they get isn't perfect, seeing as all three classes are very squishy and Resto Druids specifically are fairly easy to kill for most cleaves. All in all, it is a decent comp and it goes into the B tier. And of course, we can't talk about RMD without talking about RMP. Now this comp is still very strong in Wrath, just like it is in TBC, thanks to their insane opener combining the rogue stuns with the mage's shatter and the priest's offensive dispels. If played correctly, RMP can beat any comp in the entire game, which makes it very strong. Disc Priest also receiving a fair amount of buffs going into Wrath of the Lich King helps this comp out a lot. It plays very similarly to the way it does in TBC, and there's not too much to say about this comp other than it's just very good, which you probably already all know from TBC. This comp lands itself a spot in the S tier. Speaking of classes getting buffed in Wrath of the Lich King, looks like RPD is next, aka Rogue Shadow Priest Resto Druid. With Shadow Priest receiving a number of buffs to their survivability and overall damage, RPD actually becomes very strong in Wrath of the Lich King. This is a comp where if they catch a target out of position and the Shadow Priest is able to cast into them, it is almost guaranteed that that target is going to die as long as the Rogue can lock them down. This comp's burst is astronomical with Mind Blast, Shadow Word Death, and the Rogue's ambushes. Not to mention the fact that the Rogue has an MS effect from their Wound Poison, making their already insane damage very difficult to heal. On top of that, Druids not being able to be polymorphed and the Shadow Priest being able to dispel all magical CCs off of their teammates makes this team very hard to land a CC chain on them. They can also deal with Cleaves pretty decently seeing as they have so much control and two disarms. The only major downfall to this comp is that if the Shadow Priest gets shut down and can't put any pressure out, they will undoubtedly fall behind because the Shadow Priest is the number one person on this team that gives them the kill pressure. However, this comp has all the tools they need to completely peel the Priest and allow them to free cast on whichever target they choose. Adding all of this together, this puts RPD into the S tier. Moving on to Scooby Doo Cleave, aka Ret Paladin, Rogue, and Disc Priest. This comp has a very high amount of damage if both the Rhett and the Rogue are able to connect onto one target, while also having an MS effect from the Rogue's Wound Poison, allowing them to generate huge pressure on any target they are hitting. Since this comp is usually ran with a Disc Priest, that gives them two Magical Dispels, making it very hard to lock down the Priest, seeing as the Paladin will always be dispelling them, forcing you to CC both of them at the same time and try to kill the Rogue. On top of that, they have Hand of Freedom and tons of control with Fear, Cheap Shot, Kidney Shot, Repentance, Hodge, Blind, Gouge, and Sap. Adding all this together, Scooby Doo Cleave is definitely a strong comp. The only downfall to this is that the Ret has no real gap closer, and if the Ret gets kited for long enough, they will inevitably start to fall behind. Nevertheless, it is a good comp, and it definitely lands itself a spot in the A tier. Looks like Shadow Cleave is up next, which is Unholy DK, Affliction Lock, and Holy Paladin. This is a strong comp that excels at fighting in longer games. The concept of this is to dot up the entire enemy team while spamming fears and having the DK switch targets to whatever they can hit and generate the most pressure on. This is a very high blanket damage comp that never really runs out of steam, seeing as if the Warlock runs out of mana, they can just simply just life tap, and the DK has no real resources besides runes and runic power, which never run out. So they are very good at rotting teams to death and outlasting the other team, 
Of course, Holy Paladins also have a ton of mana regeneration and are very good at healing with low mana as well. The biggest flaw to this comp is that if the lock gets shut down, the DK won't be able to put out enough pressure by themselves, and they will start to fall behind. Overall though, it is a good comp, and when played correctly is very very scary, this comp lands itself a spot in the A tier. Looks like Shadowplay is up next. This is another comp that gets a bunch of huge buffs going into Wrath of the Lich King, specifically Resto Shamans and Shadow Priests. What makes this comp so scary is the fact that they have a lot of just blanket damage, while also having the ability to land huge burst windows if the Shadow Priest is able to cast. Not to mention the fact that they have a pretty fair amount of control with Fears, Hexes, Death Coil, Wind Shear, and Spell Lock, while also having the Shaman there to be able to purge all the magical buffs off of the enemy. This team actually also has two magical dispels, one from the Shadow Priest and one from the Fell Hunter with Devour Magic, making it pretty tricky to land a CC chain on any one target seeing as they will almost always be getting dispelled if you aren't covering your CCs. Shamans also having Hex gives this team a fantastic CC for not only peeling whoever is taking damage, but also locking in kills since most teams are not going to have a D curse to deal with it. This is a very strong spell cleave, and when played correctly, it is able to demolish any target that comes within line of sight while also rotting the enemy team at the same time. It does suffer from the main problem that any spell cleave will have, which is if the lock or the shadow priest gets shut down, they aren't going to be generating much pressure, and therefore they're not going to be able to land a kill. Regardless though, it is definitely a very very strong comp, and lands itself a spot in the S tier. Up next is one of the scariest 3v3 comps in the entire game, which is called Shatterplay, aka Shadow Priest, Frost Mage, and Resto Shaman. This comp has one of the highest bursts in the entire game and can very easily 100-0 any target in a deep freeze. On top of that, running it with a Resto Shaman gives them Bloodlust, Purge, Hex, Wind Shear, and Grounded Totem. Not to mention the fact that the Shadow Priest having Psychic Stream into Polymorph alone gives them a very long CC chain. The Shadow Priest also has Psychic Horror now, a Blanket Silence, and the Major Core still has Counter Spell. If you're able to somehow live that giant barrage of CC chains, don't worry because the Shaman has Wind Shear to make sure your healer cannot cast a single global and will purge off any kind of shield or healing buff you give to your teammates instantly, making it extremely hard to beat this team if they land a CC chain while your healer has no trinket. Not to mention the fact that the Shadow Priest has Dispel Magic as well, allowing them to double purge targets, and also take any kind of CCs off of their teammates like Polymorphs and Fears, etc. If the enemy healer has no trinket and gets caught into any kind of a CC chain, that's pretty much the game right there. I can't stress enough how absolutely insane Shadow Play is in Wrath of the Lich King, and when played correctly, it definitely is one of those comps that makes it feel like it's impossible to beat them, seeing as they have so much utility and so much damage. This comp lands itself a spot in the S plus tier for a multitude of reasons. Moving on to a surprising comp that shows up in Wrath of the Lich King, we are now talking about Spicy Chicken Cleave, aka Fire Mage, Boomkin, Resto Shaman. This is a comp that has a lot of damage and control, thanks to Living Bomb plus the Druid's Dots, and of course Cyclone. The biggest strength this comp has is the ability to be constantly cycloning one out of three of the enemy team at all times, which on top of not breaking on damage also locks their health bar in place, seeing as you're not able to heal into a cyclone. This creates a dynamic where the longer you go into the game and the more trinkets you get from the enemy team, the further the spicy chicken cleave gets ahead as long as they are landing those cyclones, not to mention the mage having tons of CC with counterspell, dragon's breath, and polymorph of course. If you let them free cast, this comp can definitely spiral out of control very quickly and land themselves a win. However, it suffers from the same spell cleave problem, where if you sit on the boomkin and they can't get their cyclones out, they will struggle to gain any kind of pressure. All in all, this comp definitely lands itself a spot in the A tier. We are now moving on to, in my opinion, probably the strongest comp in the entire game, if not one of them. We are now talking about Thundercleave. This comp is Arms Warrior, Ellie Shaman, Holy Paladin. Thanks to the truckload of buffs that all three of these classes and specs get going into Wrath of the Lich King, this comp becomes absolutely insane. The baseline amount of damage that this comp can put out at any time is astronomical. All the Ellie Shaman has to do is hit a Lava Burst into a Chain Lightning, and as long as the warrior is hitting that person with Mortal Strike up, they have a very high probability of landing a kill. This comp also has a fair amount of utility with Grounding Totem, Tremor Totem, Hand of Freedom, Two Sacrifices, Bop, Bubble, Hex, and more. The constant threat from the Ellie Shaman's Wind Shears make healing against this an absolute nightmare, seeing as you have to fake your cast every 6 seconds or else it's going to be interrupted by that. 
Combining that with all of the warrior's off charges and kicks, they usually don't even need to land any kind of a major CC chain to land a kill on somebody, since they have so many cast breaks. This is a top that goes from not that great in TBC to absolutely beyond fantastic in Wrath of the Lich King, and for a plethora of reasons lands itself a spot in the S plus tier. On the topic of unhealable damage, looks like we have TSG up next, which is Arms Warrior, Unholy Death Knight, and Holy Paladin. This is an extremely famous comp for a multitude of reasons, seeing as it has the highest consistent damage output of any comp in the entire game if both the DK and the Warrior connect to one target. On top of that, the Warrior is giving an MS effect to any target they are hitting, adding an absurd level of pressure. If any healer is caught with both of these classes on them, there is a 100% chance that that healer will be dead in a matter of seconds if they don't get peeled. The amount of cast breaks that this comp has is absurd to say the least, seeing as they have Pummel, Mind Freeze, Strangulate, Charge, Intercept, Dual Stun, and Death Grip, not to mention the Paladin's Hodge. That is eight separate ways for them to stop you from casting, on top of absolutely nuking your health bar when they are on you. What's so crazy about TSG is that this comp does so much damage if both the Warrior and the DK were connected to a healer, and the healer was hard casting heals in front of them, the healer would still die because the damage is so high. The only way to stop this top is to either outpressure them so they have to play defensive, or to peel them so your healer can get away. Once you get their cooldowns and trinkets, their damage does fall off a little and becomes manageable as long as you're peeling them. However, a failure to do this will guarantee your defeat. TSG, for obvious reasons, goes into the S plus tier. And the last comp for this tier list is WLS which is another blanket damage comp that has very high sustain damage thanks to the lock's huge dots and the warrior being able to hit multiple people at once with blade storm as well as sweeping strikes. While this comp does put out big damage, it does have one very glaring weakness, which is that the warlock is very squishy and warriors aren't that great at peeling people off their teammates. This forces them to play extremely aggressively and means the warlock has to have near perfect positioning to avoid dying to most teams. However, if they are able to get some momentum going, the Resto Shaman's Purge spam plus Bloodlust allows them to generate huge pressure, not to mention the Warlock having a Devour Magic from their pet, being able to sometimes get the Warrior or Shaman out of any kind of a Magical CC, all of that potentially landing them a kill. Combining all of that together, since the Warlock is so fragile though, and the Warrior having little peels as well as the Shaman to save them, this comp does go into the B tier. And there you have it, here is a final tier list for Wrath of the Lich King 3v3 Arena. I pretty much only covered meta comps here, and there is definitely a ton of comps that I didn't cover, since there is so, so, so many comps you can run in 3v3 Arena for Wrath of the Lich King. If you don't see a comp here that you're thinking about playing, do not think, oh, it's not viable, because that is simply not true. You can literally play almost any comp to high rating in Wrath of the Lich King, since it is much more balanced when compared to TBC, and a lot less cookie cutter and gimmicky. This of course is a tier list for a 3.3.5 patch, and an average of all the arena seasons 5, 6, 7, and 8 put together. I will be making a lot more Wrath of the Lich Chain content, as well as finishing up my TBC How to Kill series, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you guys in the next video.